now, so just count to three. Okay, uh, good evening, it's Grant Cameron. I'm just going to do a uh, quick update. Uh, people have asked me to do an update because things are happening sort of very quickly on different fronts. So rather than sending stuff to people in emails and typing it over and over again, I'll just update you to some of the latest things that have happened. I'm gonna do it, share my screen and I'm going to um, do a PowerPoint where you can see what the latest stuff is. Um, this again is the um, the UFO, uh, the government's UFO disclosure plan, and and I'm giving a little bit of background here because people um, may not be familiar with this. Uh, this is kind of inside baseball for a lot of people. That if you follow Tom DeLong, if you phone the uh, disclosure government disclosure, you'll be familiar with some of these names. So tonight I want to sort of update people as to who some of these characters are so you're not left trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, I call this, this the circus update because a lot of this stuff is circus. A lot of uh, what is happening is um, stuff where people are using codes. They're, it's like little game things. They're leaving little clues. Uh, and this actually started back in the 1980s uh, with what was called the bird code and um, spies are always supposed to like this, you know, using codes and stuff. And in the UFO community, uh, when these first disclosures were taking place through Bill Moore, uh, one of the stories that they had was um, the three, the three e Ebens, the three uh, EB one, two, and three. And the third uh, Eben, uh, the rumored story, this is in the late eighties. While we were watching this thing as it was happening, a uh, rumor story was that it was um, being held in Washington off the, the Washington Mall. And what the researchers, Bill Moore and Jamie Chandray, were receiving what was called bird code. And there was these little sort of messages and little bird codes. And as the story goes, by the time they finally figured out what the code meant, the being had gone back and they, they missed it. So this is the kind of stuff where you'll see a lot of this is happening in present day. And for me, I kind of like it. It's kind of interesting, but it sort of leaves a lot of researchers out of the loop because unless you do an awful lot of reading of Open Minds form and you know who all the characters are, um, a lot of the stuff's going to go over your head. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to talk about tonight will go over your head. Uh, and that's not because people are stupid. It's because you haven't really uh, been part of this game that, that's been going on for a number of years. Uh, this A lot of the stuff's in my book, Managing Magic, and this is sort of just the stuff that's happened since. Um, as I stated, most of the stuff is happening on Open Minds Forum, which is a, a place where um, stuff is posted, where they drop these little hints. And the main guy who's posting that, that I watch is um, Dan Smith, who is a friend of Dr. Ronald Pandolfi, who is rumored to be maybe the guy who briefed the last six presidents on UFOs. So Dan has a forum there and he posts the stuff. I don't really recommend people go to read it because uh, as I said before, unless you read this stuff for a month or six weeks, you will have absolutely no idea what anybody's talking about. It's all uh, very much inside baseball, a lot of uh, uh, code names, people acronyms for people and it's very hard to follow so I'm just going to try to interpret for you some of the stuff that has been appearing there. Um, this is something I mentioned um, a couple of days ago um, on um, on my other up uh, an earlier update and also on Facebook was that um, some of the postings that were being done were being done by Footman. Now Footman is the sort of the code name for Dr. Ronald Pandolfi. And I put this up, and this is one of the, the, the latest messages here. And you'll see um, on the message, it's uh, signed by WCM. So what I stated in my update was that uh, Ron had posted this, and I actually got a indirect message from Ron, even though it may not have come from Ron, because, of course, the CI is not into UFOs. Ron's probably not into UFOs. It's all plausible deniability. But I got a, a message as to who WCM is. So what I was being told is that um, this is not being posted by Ron. This is being posted by um, the West, uh, um, the, the, and another person who I'll identify in a minute. But I'll read the message here because it's kind of, this is um, a recurring message that for whatever reason, 
um, they want out. And this has got to do with portals. It's got to do with uh, Leah Pandolfi, who is um, Ron's uh, wife. So they call, they, here they talk about the avians. <clears throat> now, this goes back to the Avery, which started in the early 1980s with Bill Moore, who identified all his sources. Uh, now Tom DeLong has maybe 15 sources. Bill Moore had 20 sources, and he gave them all bird names. And so every high, they were high-level scientists, um, um, government people, and intelligence people who had at some point in their career come up against the UFO phenomena. They knew a little bit of the story, and um, Bill was um, using these people to get material and these people later sort of realized there was other people and they sort of joined up in what was called the Avery there where they sort of interacted with each other. So this is what's being referred to here. So um, the, the avians began their search for the visitor. Now this has got to do with this Eben thing, this visitor that supposedly was a, a, a guest of the U S government, the avian viewer searched the universe past and future for bits of information. An avian physicist examined gravitational wave anomalies from satellites orbiting the Earth. Now that's a, ref a direct reference to um, um, Dr. Ronald Pandolfi, who was the, the pelican in the uh, Avery. That was his, the name that Bill Moore had given him. An avian medical doctor examined information from brain scans from the highest mountains on Earth. That's a reference to Dr. Kit Green, who is doing a research project that I'll talk about a little bit later uh, with Dr. Gary Nolan at Stanford University and Hal Putoff, where they're looking at brain scans of highly psychic people and people who um, are experiencers, UFO experiencers. Uh, for a brief time, the avians joined together in the working group. So it was, it was a working group was a group that was star started by Dr. John Alexander in the mid 1980s, and it was a uh, working group of again most of the people were a uh, Avery type people who were trying to figure out what was going on. So here it says the avians joined together in the working group, John Alexander's working group, to compare notes and connect the dots. Then the youngest avian was requested to attend a meeting at the White House. Again, this is a reference to uh, Ron Pandolfi, um, who started his, his career in um, intelligence briefing the, the, the president in 1983 to Ronald Reagan. The president of the United States took a few minutes to joke about old times when they could chat over fondue without the burden of wisdom. Uh, then the ambassador walked into the meeting. Now, the ambassador, and this is a story that most people have a very hard time believing, but this is a story that has been told numerous times. They keep telling the story. The ambassador is uh, the father to Aliha Pandolfi, who is Ron Pandolfi's uh, wife. The president and the avian, which would be Ron Pandolfi, listened to the ambassador dis uh, describe growing up along the banks of the Vishnishar uh, Lake in Kashmir and how the small child had been found floating within an invisible pod. So this is Alia Pandolfi is found in this pod. They keep telling this story about the pod. Uh, she, uh, he had taken this child into his custody, but he soon realized it was not an ordinary child. Uh, he then offered two gifts, the pod for the president, which would be President Reagan, and the child for the avian, which was Ron Pandolfi. She was just five years old during this visit, so he would continue to care for her. With his death, she would pass on to the avian, and the final chapter would unfold. Um, so this is a message, and I put it out uh, saying it was Ron posting it, but it was not actually Ron. I'll identify who it is in a minute. So here's Ron Pandolfi, here's Aliha Pandolfi. Uh, this is Kashmir, their young daughter. And um, as I said, because the CIA doesn't put out a list of its employees and what the employees do, um, we really don't know, because I've been questioned numerous times whether Ron works for CIA, what he does for CIA. This is all sources and methods you'll never ever know if he actually works for CIA, whether he's just playing a game or what's actually going on. What we do know, and this is from the Rockefeller Initiative documents that came out, um, released by the Clinton administration, uh, to telephone conversation between Ron Pandolfi and a guy by the name of Dr. Uh, C.B. Scott Jones. And in that conversation, where um, a transcript is made by Scott Jones, it identifies the fact that when um, Bill Clinton's science advisor, Dr. Jack Gibbons, um, 
heard that Lawrence Rockefeller was coming to the White House wanting UFO disclosure, um, he had to get an update. He had to get a briefing to uh, bring him up to speed on what the UFO situation was inside the U.S. government. And so the briefing was put out to Dr. Ronald Pandolfi at the CIA. We know this uh, based upon this document from the Rockefeller Initiative. This is 1993. So at that point, the White House is asking for briefings on UFOs, and Ron Pendolfi's the guy the briefing goes to. Now, Ron doesn't do the briefing because, of course, the CIA is not into UFOs, and you can't do a briefing that's going to end up on, on, um, in, the, in the public. They knew that the Rockefeller thing would become public. So what he does is he gives the uh, job of doing the briefing to Dr. Bruce McAbee, who was a Navy physicist in Washington, D.C., and he does the briefing for the president's science advisor, which, of course, makes it not a briefing. It just makes some guy off the street who's writing a thing. It really doesn't mean anything. It's not official. And he produces this briefing, which really isn't given to the science advisor. But this sort of is just a document I show to sort of verify the fact that, that Ron has been associated with the White House and UFOs for quite a few years. Here's Ron again with his wife and uh, daughter. And this is with the guy that most of the material has been uh, released to. It's all plausible deniability. Uh, this is uh, Dan Smith, who is um, godfather to uh, Kashmir Pandolfi. He's also the best man for Ron Pandolfi's uh, wedding. And according to Dan Smith, uh, he says from time to time, Ron will tell him stuff. And he said, I either have my radar on and I hear it. He will not repeat it a second time. And I can repeat it to whoever I want. And um, everything that I have said that Ron has said to me for 26 years, he will, he will deny he's ever said. This makes it plausible deniability. So the story is coming out and Dan is telling the story, but nobody can ever verify uh, whether the material he's being told is true. So this is how they're doing this, this gradual disclosure. And the point is that if you want full disclosure, and Tom DeLong actually pointed this out, if you want full disclosure, you put the president up, you put the head of the CIA. The reason that they use puppets like Dan Smith and Bill, uh, Bill Moore and uh, Stephen Greer and even myself is that you can't put the president on TV. This is how you have to do it. You have to go through puppets. You have to have this plausible deniability where the story is sort of leaking out slowly, according to the, the report, that the Brookings Institute report, where they said we have to acclimatize the people and you have to do it slowly. So this is what they're doing. They're using these, these what I call the puppets. Um, <clears throat> so this is one of the, the postings that um, Dan has put out. Uh, I had to flip-flop with Kevin. Now, Kevin is a guy that is... Um, from what I understand, is doing a documentary for Ron Pandolfi. This is one of the disclosure efforts that's going on in Hollywood. It's a six-part uh, disclosure uh, through a nonfiction documentary. And um, the, 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 this message says that Kevin wants to do it in a fictional approach. And according to Dan Smith, Ron argued that there's plenty of fiction already in the pipeline and that we should stick with the documentary. So Dan posts this uh, July 25th of this year to identify the fact that this documentary is going on. And the last, the first four episodes, uh, according to the early versions I heard, we're going to be dealing with with this Avery, with this group of high-level people who had tried to figure out the UFO phenomena. And then two episodes would be nonfiction on the portal. The idea that we have portal technology, that we have this interdimensional uh, aspect to the universe, and that may be how the aliens are coming from there to here is through these portals. Uh, here's another message that was posted November 27th. This is just a couple days ago. Uh, Dan Smith's post, uh, furthermore, it has come to my attention that the princess, and the princess is Ron Pandolfi's wife, has somehow sensed the opening of additional portals. Um, so again, you have this situation where they're talking about portals all the time, and uh, Leah Pandolfi, uh, as the story goes, is from the other side. She is actually from the other side of the portal. She came in this, this pod, and um, she is here on this uh, sort of mission, and they're talking about portals all time and the princess is actually sort of in charge of the portals there was even a story that she had been that she had actually gone to switzerland to help the swiss government work on some sort of portal that they had uh, the princess is as the story goes sort of in charge of the portals and when the story came up about ron pandolfi actually briefing uh donald trump 
part of the story that Dan Smith put out was that uh, Leah Pandolfi actually was in on the briefings and she was the one that uh, actually provided the material on the portal to the president. Uh, one of the other people that has been involved in this for many years probably knows this Avery uh, bird thing better than I do is um, uh, Gary Beckham who runs a site. He used to have a his own uh, discussion group on um, Open Minds Forum, and he has sort of now gotten involved again, and he's watched this very closely. He probably knows the inside of the Avery. He's talked to more of these people. I really don't talk to them. He's talked to a lot of them. He's um, part of this story, and uh, I'll mention him in a minute. Um, so here's um, how, how this latest episode starts. Um, Gary Beckham posts this on Open Minds Forum. And this happened on November 23rd. He says, we have much to be thankful for, but these are troubling times. Not, oh, no, this is Ron posting this. This is actually a, a footman. This is actually Ron posting. He said, we have much to be thankful for. These are troubling times. Not all those who seek disclosure will be pleased with the resulting revelation. So Ron has, even though this message I got wrong, it wasn't him posting it. He has posted messages on Open Minds Forum. And if he weren't the sort of rumored power guy that he is, it wouldn't really make any difference. But the fact is, this may be the guy who's running the whole show. Um, so this is by uh, Gary Beckham. He posts this uh, just a couple days ago. Um, Kit, uh, Kit's version of the core story. So he brings up a guy by the name of Dr. Kit Green, who was the uh, guy who ran the UFO um, desk at the White House, the weird desk, whatever you want to call it, before Ron Pandolfi. He, Ron has run it since 1983. Kit Green ran it from my, my interpretation is 1969 to 1983 uh, and so he's talking about this this core story which is part of the the whole um, the Avery story that there were three beings one in the 40s one in the 70s or early 80s and again in the 1990s these beings and the Avery are trying to uh, track these beings down trying to get this whole story um, so he posts um, uh, there's another one by Ron Pandolfi posting um, and again, this goes back to this whole portal story with the, with the princess. I have known and watched over the princess since she was four years old in this life. Kashmir has known and watched over me since long before. If you see the, the Chronicles as, as a saga of a happy husband, father, and business owner, then you will see only what conforms to your expectations. Uh, when this veil gives way to a deeper insight, you will be open to disclosure. Uh, now here, um, finally, is, is where this latest um, thing that I want to sort of update people on starts. This is posted a couple of days ago by Gary Beckham, and he asks a question on the Open Minds Forum to Dan. He said, Dan, have you had any recent contact with Dr. Kit Green, who is, is, was known as the Blue Jay in the Avery, uh, who ran the, the, he was a CIA um, guy, from 69 to 83, he still does contract work, supposedly, for the CIA, is very interested in the UFO phenomena, has always been interested in, in the phenomena, and actually was the control officer for the remote viewing program in the early 1970s, uh, which was run out of SRI. He said, I'm curious about the role he played with Tom DeLong's setup. Kid has been looking for a public figure to push his interpretation of disclosure of the core story. So he sets this up, and then he puts another message through um, oh, the second message I don't have here, but the second message, he basically again asked this whole thing. So this is where this uh, message that I read earlier comes out, and it's signed by WCM, giving an answer to Gary Beckham. Um, and the, um, uh, the actually stands for Western Coast Marine, is from what, I, what I'm told. Here's a, another message. This is on uh, one of the things that Ron Pendolfi put out one of his newsletters, um, this is uh, Ron and Aliha, and they get their hand on this, this piece of paper. And again, you see this, this sort of the story that, that for whatever reason, uh, they, this continues to be told. Um, uh, she descended from the stars on a beam of light, slid down the mountain on a pod, floated down the river into a well, uh, walked across the stream, uh, held out your foot, and, I, and I, it gave me life. That's how she met him in Washington. Uh, then you reached up and plucked the finest star, pulled it down, 
and made Kashmir. You gave life, love, and endless uh, joy. Uh, you motivate those who love to grow, experience, and something the world. Uh, you were, you were the wish, and you were the well. So this is again the this the same sort of story. Now this is the uh, Western Coast Marine. This guy's name is John. Um, he actually appears in a video that is posted uh, um, by uh, Aliyah Pandolfi. This is on a cruise ship. This is December of last year. And uh, John's name is actually John Sillison. Um, and he is um, ex-Marine. And he is supposedly the guy that's in charge of uh, the portal thing. He has some sort of key role in the portal thing. But John really doesn't. He's not very vocal. He doesn't talk. I've just heard a little bit about what Dan has posted about him. And he uh, basically always appears in um, some of Ron's, um, if you look at Ron's YouTube channel, you will see that Ron, they, they, from time to time, they'll post videos where they get remarried, and John Sillison is always the guy who's reading the scroll. So they go places in the world, and they, they do these marriage ceremonies, and, and John reads it. So John is the portal guy. And here is uh, this, uh, the only time that I know that Ron's actually gone on camera, and you'll actually hear him reference John here. And what he's talking about is the portal. This is the idea that they want out this portal technology. They want this thing out. And uh, the portal, the, the story was that last year it was in the desert. It was in the Nevada desert. They were going to go there. And Dan Smith called off this excursion. So here, um, Aliha asks Footman. She said, what do you think? And I'll play the video, but then I'm going to actually read because you can't really hear. It's on a cruise ship. His voice doesn't come through. And here's Ron talking about the actual portal technology on video. Yeah. Uh, what about you? What do you think about? Well, I think for thousands of years people were speculating about what it's like to enter the heaven and enter another world. Now we're about on the cusp of a breakthrough when uh, the door is about to open. And John's next major adventure is the desert. He'll be by a few people sitting here. We'll bring them through that doorway into that next world and then back. <laughs> Are you, are you so the John is that's the guy who wrote that message under the footman's name. Now here's what Ron actually said. For thousands of years people have speculated about what it's like to enter into the entrance to another world. Now we are on the cusp of a breakthrough where the door is about to open. John's next adventure to the desert. During John's next adventure to the desert, he will be joined by a couple of people sitting here which will bring them through the doorway and into the next world and then back. So this portal thing goes on and John is, is, is one of the key guys. We don't know too much about him. There's two different stories that Dan Smith tells about this uh, portal technology. Uh, he travels around with the Pendolfis and so does uh, John. And the, the one story that Dan tells is about St. Catherine's Island which is just off the coast, the, the coast of Georgia. And they go there, I believe it's in March of this year. And it's at that meeting they're doing drone. These, uh, Ali has, has these people with drones. They're flying these little drones around. And uh, there's a, an object on the table that uh, is a, described by Dan as a small, looks like a pillbox with a button on it that's as big as the, uh, the box. And he picks up the object. And Ron Pendolfi says to him, I'd advise you, put it back on the table. So he puts it back on the table and Dan Smith's interpretation is that this is an actuator. This is something that actually is allows, is part of the portal technology that they can open a portal uh, using this actuator and that there was two of them and the two people, uh, Dan mentions who these people are, they're at the at St. Catharines Island and they each are taking a separate piece of this uh, technology and they're going back to Trump Trump Tower in New York City. So this is the first episode where Dan talks about this, this technology. The other one that happens a little bit later is <clears throat> happens um, on um, Puerto Rico. And the Pandolfis are there and so is Dan. And uh, then they tell about the story about John being there and recovering an actuator from Puerto Rico. Uh, so this is what, what, what uh, Dan 
rights. Uh, also, John's trip to retrieve an actuator was not removed from the country. He's talking about Puerto Rico. Uh, or, uh, it was simply located and then relocated within the country in question as part of the reactivation of the portal in question. So you have this, this uh, sort of idea, and this, supposedly the story was that he actually got it, sort of he was able to pull it out of a portal, and he knew where it was. It's, it's, it's very bizarre, and um, that's sort of the problem with this story that they're telling, is that nobody really knows whether it's animal, vegetable, mineral, or whether it's in your head, what these portal things are, but there's no doubt that this, this portal thing is being pushed uh, greatly, even in fact the, the idea that um, when they talked about this nonfiction documentary that was being done, I asked uh, one of the, the writers, I said, well, if this is nonfiction, who's going on camera about the portal? Because that would sort of open it up if some major official goes on camera and says we have portal technology that's interdimensional and we can move into other worlds and they can come into our world. And he stated that um, he believed the princess would go on camera. And it now appears that the person that may go on camera is uh, Joe Firmage who apparently had, he was a dot-com executive, was very interested in the UFO phenomenon, had actually put up a quarter million dollars to research what was called the new majestic documents, 3,700 pages of documents that were leaked in the 1990s. He put up a quarter million dollars to research these documents, very interested in the UFO phenomena, and apparently is into the portal thing. And I've heard his name numerous times mentioned as being possibly the guy that's going to be in this documentary talking about the fact that we have some sort of portal technology or we're working on it. Uh, so here's uh, a, another posting by Dan, which shows um, a, a, one of these messages. Dimitri was the producer, also has a publishing company, and suggests that Kevin, Kevin's the writer of this thing, do a, a quickie book project on the side. Kevin thought he could do that inside of a month. Uh, he was also under the impression that he has access to more than one portal. Ron thinks it may be the same one, just slightly shifted. All the time living with John, and that John is the, John Sillison is the, John that we talked about, the West Coast Marine, uh, John has never opened up on the, the subject. So they're actually, we're going to take the producer uh, to, uh, I think it was to Firmage to see this portal, and it was called off by the princess. So this stuff is happening as we speak. This story is still unraveling. Dan is still posting, and whatever it means, it's uh, it seems to indicate that they want us uh, to have some understanding about some sort of portal technology. Uh, these, uh, this is why I've sort of, um, I'm much more interested in uh, the Latino um, experiencers who are talking about uh, not portals, they call them Zendras. And we just did an interview with somebody just minutes ago from Argentina about this. And the difference with theirs, here's one, one actually from, from a video where they take um, one of these uh, Zendra um, uh, items uh, the difference is um, with these, we have actual witnesses, and they'll actually tell you what the what the Zendra or the portal looked like, what happened when they stepped in it, um, and we have multiple witnesses. This particular one in 2009 had um, 125 witnesses that claimed to have gone into this portal Zendra type thing, gotten messages, and uh, we're trying to interview these people as we speak. So. The, the, all this uh, stuff is sort of all moving right now, this idea that the, para the materialistic paradigm may be wrong and there is actually ways of using wormholes and portals to move from one place in the universe to another. Uh, now we do sort of an update uh, because this is something else that's sort of recently been brought up. Um, it was Ron's reaction to the Tom DeLong um, news conference that was held about a month ago. And the, these are the, the, the people on board. And what, what basically happens here is you get sort of a, uh, a, a shift of um, thinking on this whole thing. Um, hang on here. Oh, this video is not going to work here. Hang on. Maybe I can do it. Oh, shoot. Oh, this is okay. One, there are certain things that should never have been secret. Okay, hang on. Let me do this again. Okay. Um, this is um, um, a video, this is a, an update that was um, discovered by uh, Robert Williams in England, is there's a, a, a shift in the story that Tom DeLong, for people who've watched his early interviews, 
uh, believes in the cargo cult theory. He believes the aliens are evil and that we have to kill the aliens. And then you have a, a shift that actually took place uh, when um, a guy named Jim Semivan, who's a CIA guy, took over the Tom DeLong operation. Uh, they made a shift away from this sort of evil alien thing. One of the shifts actually was, was visible. Uh, Lou Elizondo, who's one of the people that was on Tom DeLong's um, uh, panel, who was interviewed by Leslie Kane, uh, was actually asked by Leslie Kane, uh, are these are, are are they national security? Is there a uh, are they evil? This this sort of thing. Are they bad news? Because of course Tom DeLonge is saying they're bad news, and Elizondo says no. We have seen no indication of any um, threat, although we don't know for sure. You can never be sure. But he said, as far as we know right now, there's no threat. So here, what you're gonna I'm gonna show you here is a video that Tom DeLonge does, and they actually alter the video. And the original video before these, uh, the news conference where they made the shift to make this seem less threatening, where they took out the sort of the evil alien type thing and made it into, you know, we're going to save the world with new technology and all this kind of stuff. They, they do the shift and Tom DeLong, uh, they actually alter one of his videos. So you're going to see a video. We're going to play the first part, the video. Then you're going to see the video a second time. And you're going to see that in the second one in part three, they actually remove the word threatening from the video. So this is a Tom DeLong video that you've probably seen before, but you will see that they've actually altered the video to take out the word threatening. If we can get it to work. One, there are certain things that should never have been secret. Two, there are secrets that were justifiable at the time but should now be disclosed. And three, there are things that are so terrifying and unimaginable that certain interests believe that they should never, ever be made public. After this, you might even agree. Now here comes the second one, where they take the word out. One, there are certain things that should never have been secret. Two, there are secrets that were justifiable at the time but should now be disclosed. And three, there are things that are so unimaginable that certain interests believe that they should never, ever be made public. After this, you might even agree. So when this, um, this um, news conference took place, uh, Ron Pandolfi made a comment to Steve Bassett, and he made the same comment through Dan Smith. Looks like the usual uh, loons and crooks. So basically discounting the fact that the Tom DeLonge thing, uh, the word that Dan has used quite often is this is misinformation. This is just uh, Tom is, is doing this stuff and it really doesn't have any, uh, it's all just sort of garbage material. So uh, what I wanted to look at tonight quickly is to look at the panel and then take consider uh, if Ron is actually with the CIA, does he really not know who these people are? Uh, the main guy is uh, Jim Semivan. I've known about him for a couple of years. Um, he is the guy, I will assure you, is the guy who's running the Tom DeLonge operation. He's uh, the guy who's, who's in charge of this thing. He's a, uh, from what I heard, was an SES-2, which is the civilian uh, equivalent to a, a two-star general, uh, was a, a, a briefer for the president of the United States inside the, the Bush White House, and uh, is the is sort of the main guy. Here he is with um, uh, Chris Bledsoe, uh, experiencer. Uh, Jim Semivan is himself an experiencer. The story that was being put out by Ron is that um, first, he didn't exist. Then when I produced these photos that he did exist, then it was, uh, he does exist, but that's not his name. And John Alexander has now confirmed from what I heard, yes, this man is for real. He is the, the real deal. And John also confirmed that, um, that uh, he's known of all the people on the DeLong uh, panel for 20 years. So this is uh, John and this, this fact that, that he has confirmed that Semivan's for real. And if you don't believe that, you can go on to John's Facebook page and Jim Semivan's Facebook page, and you'll see that they are friends on Facebook. Uh, so here's the team. Uh, again, you have a CIA guy, um, Jim Semivan. Ron's basically saying he doesn't know him. He doesn't really, um, you know, this guy's not for real. 
Um, and from what I heard was that when Jim Semivan had his initial experience in the 1990s, uh, he went to Ron to find out what was going on. And from what I was told, was not briefed on what actually went on until he actually retired from the CIA. And the story I heard was Ron actually did the briefing when he left the CIA. So now you look at the other rest of the team held put off against CIA, uh, worked the, the remote viewing program, which was financed by the CIA. And he's also teamed up with Kit Green and Gary Nolan on an experiencer project where they're looking at highly psychic people. They're looking at their DNA. They're looking at their uh, brain patterns at Stanford University. And um, Kit Green is ex-CIA, held put off his sponsored by CIA, so Ron would have to, I think, know this kind of stuff. Lou Elizondo, uh, uh, Director of National Intelligence as former agent in charge. Uh, Ron was with uh, the Director of National Intelligence for, uh, I believe, a year. Uh, so the question is, does he know who Lou Elizondo is? Uh, Chris Mellon, he actually uh, sort of has confirmed, uh, he was the assistant, uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense for Intelligence in the Clinton and Bush administrations. That's where Ron was providing the briefing for the President's Science Advisor, and he was also the Majority Staff Director of the Senate uh, Intelligence Committee on Intelligence. And um, Dan Smith tells a story about Ron setting up a meeting with the head of intelligence uh, uh, for him. So uh, Chris Mellon, uh, again, you have an intelligence background, and Ron actually did state later on uh, that Chris Mellon has been in the full game since the 1980s. Uh, Gary Nolan uh, is, is on the, the panel for um, uh, Tom DeLong. He works with Kit Green on this this. Uh, project at Stanford University. Kit Green is ex-CIA and probably still contracting to the CIA. Well, the other person that's on the um, DeLong thing is Dr. Paul uh, Rapp. Uh, again, he's a brain function and consciousness consultant. Um, he uh, uh, received a certificate of commendation from the Central Intelligence Agency for significant contributions to the mission of the Office of Research and Development. You have another CIA guy. You have Do Dr. Uh, Norm Kahn, National Security and Program Management Consultant. 30-year uh, career with the Central Intelligence Agency, culminating in his development in the development and direction of the intelligence community's counter-biological weapons program. So basically, you have Tom DeLong's team is basically not all CIA, but it's pretty heavily CIA. And I find it pretty hard to believe that Ron would not know who all these people are and is calling all these people a bunch of crooks and and uh, kooks. Uh, what it basically may come down to is, is what I was told is that there are uh, numerous teams. Dan Smith uses the word numerous teams. Uh, and I was also told six teams that there are multiple teams. And it may actually may be the fact that uh, all these people are reporting to Ron Pandolfi. That's this whole thing. And the whole idea behind um, claiming that these people are crooks and and this sort of thing is it's all sources and methods. If Ron Pandolfi is running this operation, then he cannot identify who the people are and he cannot identify what they're doing. This is classified. It's all sources and methods. That's the classified par part of the program. But you are indirectly releasing material that's coming out. And one of the Tom DeLong's last statement was uh, from November the 18th was a date in three weeks, there's going to be a release of uh, formerly classified UFO film and uh, video that is going to be released not by him, by, by one of the people on his team. So you have this uh, disclosure thing. Ron is saying he doesn't know who any of these people are. It's all misinformation. Uh, I would say that it's all part of the same program to uh, get the message out. Uh, the last thing I want to discuss, and this is goes to um, meetings that Aliyah had been having where people can actually go there and ask questions. Um, I didn't get invited to this, but it's just sort of a, an, an event that's happening this coming Sunday. Uh, it's an event about Alice in Wonderland, and uh, Aliyah has inv uh, invited a bunch of people. And uh, Dan posted this. He said, over Thanksgiving, I was assigned by the princess to read Alice in Wonderland. Uh, when that child child's book proved to be above my pay grade, I was assigned to see the movie. Uh, furthermore, it has come to my attention that the princess has somehow sensed the opening of additional portals. 
mind you that no additional traffic has yet to be perceived. So basically, um, she has assigned everybody that she's invited them to a tea party, and they're going to go down the rabbit hole. This is often used in the UFO world um, that you know we're all down a rabbit hole and uh, everybody's supposed to pick a character and they're supposed to come to her tea party on Sunday and so they're very playful with this whole sort of subject about this this whole thing here's the invitation that she sent to various people read the book with an open mind choose a character that describes you be prepared to have uh, some mad fun and uh, don't forget the tea. So I, I know some of the people that were invited, and hopefully they'll have a good time and talk about portals and how it relates to Alice in Wonderland. And the final one is the uh, tea party invite. So that's my latest update. Uh, when more stuff comes up, we'll do another update. Uh, thanks for your time. Hopefully you get to go to the tea party.